My name is Caspar Henderson. I'm the author of the book of Barely Imagined Beings, a 21st century bestiary. Uh, it's a celebration of the natural world and just how strange and bizarre it is, as well as how wonderful. And I'm going to read you something from the introduction. Uh, when I uh, started the book, it, it was a result of a dream. I fell asleep in a, in a meadow outside Oxford. And uh, when I woke up, um, the thought of the idea of the book popped into my head. So um, this is from that uh, moment. I woke with the thought that many real animals are stranger than imaginary ones, and it is our knowledge and understanding that are too cramped and fragmentary to accommodate them. We have barely imagined them. And in a time that we are now learning to call the Anthropocene, a time of extinctions and transformations as momentous as any in the history of life, this needs attention. I should, said the thought in my head, look more deeply into unfamiliar ways of being in the world of which I only had an inkling, and I should map those explorations in a book of barely imagined beings. I tried to make a, a, a bestiary for the 21st century, so in the Middle Ages people created books of beasts, and they were books about the animals, but they were, they were actually also about how, what the world was and what kind of world God had made and how you could understand it. And I wanted to do something a bit like that um, in, our, in our scientific age. It's not, it's, this is not a religious or theological book, but it, it does say that when we start to look at animals in the natural world, it, it's one of the ways in which we can understand ourselves a little bit better. It is a delightful book. It's beautifully illustrated and designed, so that's a, a nice thing about it. And it's enjoyable and I hope humorous to read, as well as containing lots of amazing information about the natural world. And I hope people will also enjoy the more reflective um, and digressive aspects, the uh, references to philosophy and poetry, as well as to science. This is a book of 27 chapters, and each chapter is apparently about a different animal, um, many of them in the sea, um, but from all the environments on, on the earth. Um, and each chapter is, is also an exploration of a different aspect of human existence. Um, what it means to see, uh, what's the nature of memory, um, quite, quite big themes which uh, in some sense are, they're not, it's not a natural history book, it's, it's a collection of reflections about how we imagine the world, both scientifically but also in terms of our, our moral sense and our values. Um, so those two things are combined in, in each of these chapters and each one takes a different route into, into exploring those themes. You don't, you don't have to love these animals. Uh, I mean, I, I think uh, once you start to look at even uh, a creature that's superficially a little bit scary or ugly, so in this book there are, there's um, Mori eels with really fearsome pharyngeal jaws that will kind of leap out from the back of their throat like an alien creature and, and swallow you down, and there's, a, there's slimy protozo protozoic organisms on the seabed, and, and uh, these weird-looking spiders with, with fantastically um, sophisticated eyes. Um, you don't have to love them to realise that they, ha they are really remarkable. And um, if, you know, if, even if they're not uh, beautiful on the outside, they've got a kind of radiant inner beauty. Um, and that beauty is um, the wonder of life itself, how over hundreds of millions of years, um, creatures and ways of being have come into existence that are incredibly sophisticated and uh, still um, in many ways beyond the edge of our scientific understanding. The book's partly, it's a celebration of life and just how astonishing um, the, the things that have, have evolved are, the creatures around us, how amazing they are, mo much more amazing than we often realise. It's partly about that but it, and it's a celebration of life. But it's also about how humans are um, a part of this wonderful evolutionary story and are now in a position of, uh, of responsibility for, for what we have around us. I was really delighted, of course, to hear this book had been shortlisted for the Royal Society Science Prize. I mean, it's a, you know, um, it was just, it's just great. I, it's a very prestigious prize um, and the books on the list, the other books on the list I should say, are, are excellent books and it's just, you know, any author 
If you're, you're sweating blood to produce a book, you're really working and it's, it's really nice to get recognition of that kind and I'm, I'm just delighted.